The PIF selling shares in Saudi telecom company. Uh, it's the latest privatization push from the PIF, Saudi Public Investment Fund. Uh, they plan to raise as much as $3.1 billion through the sale of STC, offering 5% stake, uh, 100 million shares. Um, this is juicy. The STC is the Middle East's most profitable mobile phone operator and the kingdom's largest telecom company. Um, the price will be offered at between 100 rials and 116 rials, and it starts to... Um, December 10th is the latest, I believe. Um, November 3rd, Bloomberg reported that the PIF was weighing a deal to combine the mobile phone infrastructure of STC and Zane, Saudi Arabia. So I don't know where that stands vis-a-vis um, -vis this IPO. Uh, but this is a good chance to talk a bit about all the privatiz privatization going on in Saudi Arabia and sort of how fast it's happening. Richard, let me kick it to you first here. Uh, I'm in, intrigued by this, and this is... This is uh, reaping what you sow. I, I think this is great because Saudi Arabia, and we've talked about this, you know, after the big crash in 2006 and the introduction of the Tadawul in 07, which is now privatized, you know, they, they've gone through steps to make itself a, a, an attractive $2.3 trillion market, you know, ninth largest in the world. And, and I'm struck when you look at this, we're looking, so PIF is going to, PIF is going to reap maybe 3.1 billion from the sales of Saudi Telecom. They, they in September, floated uh, IPO 20% of its solutions, STC solutions, Arabian Internet and Communication Services, um, which is sort of the technology side, for 966 million. So uh, they're gonna, close to $4 billion, they're gonna pull out of this by, by, by going into the equity markets. And this is a lever that wasn't there a long time ago. We have to remember, I mean, Saudi Arabia first went to, you know, international markets in terms of its bond in 2016. You know, and they weren't sure what's going to happen. That was oversubscribed significantly. So they're, they're finding ways, uh, and they've created uh, frameworks uh, to, that are mature, and this is how this is how mature countries raise money and government funding and this sort of thing. And and I think it's it's a testament that uh, to the stock market how they've grown that, and to their uh, widening uh, number of means to raise funds for investment. And you when you when you sort of throw that in along with the BlackRock uh, investment of, of of buying you know paying 15.5 billion for 49 percent of 20 year lease of, of Aramco's natural gas pipelines, yet another means of raising funds that really wasn't utilized uh, five years ago, three years ago. I mean, it's, it's an interesting, it's just a much more complex, deeper market for uh, the Saudi government to swim in. Yeah, I would, I would say that this falls squarely within a longer term strategy to monetize government assets, ideally those assets that are not, you know, in a, in the sensitive uh, security or, or, um, you know, strategic sectors that uh, have their own, you know, sensibility or uh, sensitivities, uh, and they're probably better left in the, in the government sphere. And, and there certainly are going to be some commercial entities that, that fall into that category. But what I would say is hearing this news now in, um, you know, end of 2021, 2020, looking at 2022 is certainly much better than uh, some of the scenarios that were envisioned in, you know, the early days of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, mm -hmm. when um, people were almost talking about a fire sale of, of government assets. And I, I, I do think there was a period when um, it was very alarming to think that some of these governments might be in a situation or might feel the pressure to really push through privatizations of, 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 of many of these government assets and sell them at, at really bargain rates. Um, I think that would have been um, a very unfortunate uh, situation to try to either um, you know, make um, budget shortfall, um, you know, make up for budget shortfalls or, or, or I guess to try to meet uh, privatization targets that, probably, that, that would have been less, a, less of a concern. So that is happening now is, I think, a good thing. This is a better economic uh, period. The, the states across the region, Saudi Arabia is economically speaking, from a macroeconomic indicator is doing relatively well, growth rates and the economic recovery is just pushing along the best it can. 
even the weaker states of Bahrain and I mean, weaker, fi- you know, uh, financially speaking, right. uh, Bahrain and Oman did pretty well. So uh, Saudi Arabia is in a much stronger position to advance its privatization, um, various elements of its privatization initiative now um, than a year or two ago. And it, it, it's consistent with uh, the Crown Prince has said, you know, if, 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 if PIF is own 70% of a company, that's wrong. Let's, let's, you know, let's shed it in the equities and we should be more 30% and then go from there. And this is a, you know, specific example of just that, 70 to basically 40. You know, they reduce their share and they, they, you know, they make it available to mostly Saudi, you know, institutional, of course, but a significant number of Saudi and private investors. We were joined today uh, by Dr. Robert Mogulnicki. Just awesome conversation with you, uh, Robert. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, check out Robert's work. Uh, he's working for the Arab Gulf States Institute in Washington, uh, Georgetown, busy guy. So we really appreciate your valuable time. Oh, it's wonderful to be here and you do great work. So it's happy to be, to be part of it today. Thanks for being with us today, Robert. All right.